What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 15 WWE facts that sound fake but are actually 100% true. This should be a very interesting one. Love these little tidbit informative videos, some things that you probably didn't know or whatnot. I love these type of videos. Uh, so, this should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support. We're gonna get right into these facts that sound fake but are actually true, man. I'm looking forward to it. Let's do the thing. WWE has an expansive history and due to the company producing hours upon hours of content on a weekly basis for several decades, there are truly some crazy facts and statistics about WWE and their talent both past and present. Yeah. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 15 WWE facts that sound fake but are actually 100% true. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. And subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Dates. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 15, Cody Rhodes once lost a match to himself. A Cody Rhodes holds huh. a rather unique accomplishment when it comes to his WWE career. At the 2008 Night of Champions event, Rhodes walked into the match as one half of the World Tag Team Champions alongside Hardcore Holly, and the team was set to face Ted DiBiase Jr. and a mystery opponent. I the think I remember opponent this. turned out to be Rhodes himself. Yeah. Rhodes would turn on Holly, allowing uh -huh. him and DiBiase to become the new World Tag I Team Champions. This. This meant that in theory, I miss those tag team belts, by the way. They look so much better than what we have right now in the uh, red and blue quarters, man. But I remember this. That's that's funny. He technically lost against himself. I don't know how how this happens, but it happened. Theory, Rhodes lost a match to himself on pay-per-view. Number 14, John Cena is not a Grand Slam champion. Oh. Whilst John Cena is one of the most decorated and celebrated wrestlers in WWE history, believe it or not, yeah. he's not actually considered... He doesn't... Has he ever won the Intercontinental Championship? I don't think he has. ...to be a Grand Slam champion due to Cena failing to ever win the yeah. Intercontinental title. This means that WWE don't consider Cena as a Grand Slam champion. Due to the WWE legend being semi-retired, it seems unlikely that Cena will ever be in the hunt for the title. That's crazy, bro. This nigga has won so many championships, and the one championship that has eluded him is the Intercontinental Championship. That's crazy. One of the greatest of all time is not a Grand Slam ch Grand Slam champion. That's wild. But it would be a fitting final storyline for Cena to try and reach Grand Slam status in WWE. Number 13, wow. The Miz's atrocious pay-per-view main event record. Uh -oh. For over a decade, The Miz has been one of the WWE's most <laughs> oh, boy. stars. The Miz has had a number of title reigns, including two reigns with the WWE title. Uh -huh. Despite The Miz's obvious success, there is a crazy statistic when it comes to The Miz and his pay-per-view main event. The Miz throughout his entire WWE career has only won two pay-per-view main events. The first of these came at WrestleMania 27 when he defeated John Cena to retain the title. Uh -huh. The second of these came in 2021 when he cashed in on Drew McIntyre at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view to win the WWE title for the second time. Number 12. That's Pete crazy. Dunn's real That's crazy. When you think about it, I mean... That's it. Both times he's won the championship. <laughs> That's wild when you think about that. Or well, actually, the other time was um, he retained the championship against John Cena, I believe, uh, at WrestleMania. But just the fact that those—that's his main event record. He's two and zero. No one's beating him in the main event. That's wild. I want to know his record outside of the main event on pay per views. That I want to know for sure. Name. A former NXT UK champion, Pete Dunne, aka Butch, is one of the most successful stars to come out of England. Dunne is considered to be an elite in-ring talent, and when you learn what Dunne's real name is, you'll immediately think it's a rib. A Dunne's real name is Peter Thomas England. Wow. That's right, Dunne has the most English name possible. <laughs> Peter if Thomas Dunne England. If does a gimmick that focuses on his nationality, then the WWE could look to rebrand Dunne using his real-life name, as it would literally be a perfect fit. Number 11, Peter. the WrestleMania 19 main event. <laughs> WrestleMania 19 holds a special place in the heart of many WWE fans. The show itself is considered to be a standout WrestleMania event, and the main event featuring Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle was a fitting close to a stellar show. Mm. Interestingly, the main event matchup Classic between match. Lesnar and Angle is the only WrestleMania event to date featuring two wrestlers using their real life name. Due to WWE wow. renaming virtually all of their talent, the chances of this ever happening again are 
probably next to impossible. That's crazy. That's a crazy fact. Jake the Snake Roberts is actually scared of snakes. Jake the Snake How? Roberts has one of the most popular and beloved gimmicks ever. It's hard to imagine Roberts delivering another gimmick outside of him coming to the ring with a menacing snake. A logic would assume that Roberts has a passion and admiration for snakes, but shockingly that's not true. During an appearance on WWE's Most Wanted Treasures, the Hall of Famer revealed that he's legitimately scared of snakes, but he was always able to hide the fear when portraying his popular character. That's very impressive. I want y'all to understand, for someone to be afraid of an animal, but yet using that animal as part of your gimmick on a on a regular basis, that's like someone being afraid of spiders, but you're holding spiders every week in your hand. Like what? That's crazy. Duh. I'm afraid of snakes and WWE tried to hire somebody to teach me how to deal with the snakes and I blew them off. The first time that I touched the snake was the first time I had to pick it up in the ring. But there's something that happens to me when I walk out the door. Because once that bell rings, I did that transformation to Jake the snake. No problem. Jake's not afraid of anybody. Wow. Snakes. Number nine, Randy Very Orton cool. wants to use CM Punk's iconic theme song. A CM Punk's This Fire Burns theme song is one love of the most that. replayable theme songs that- I love that fucking theme song, bro. Fucking love it. So good. Cult of Personality is cool, but that shit, that shit hits, bro. WWE have ever used, but before Punk debuted the song, another former world champion would use the track. Randy Orton would use a song for one week on SmackDown, and it was certainly an odd fit. The song didn't suit Orton really? in any capacity, and it was later decided that the theme song would instead be used for CM Punk. Hey, man, I gotta find that clip of him using that theme song. What? Really? WWE would also reuse the theme as a theme song for 2006 Judgment Day pay-per-view, which was a welcome move, as it was a perfect fit for a pay-per-view theme. Number eight, Songs Kelly Kelly great. once defended the world title. Didn't I know that, TV's man? Champion Kelly Kelly had several key roles during her career, and in one particular match, she actually defended Edge's world title. Kelly would team with Edge to take on Lay Cool and Dolph Ziggler in a two-on-three handicap match, and this put a huge spotlight on Kelly to deliver. Damn. The finish of the match came when Kelly performed a spear on Layla, which in turn allowed Edge to retain the world title. Number seven, Paul Bearer was a legitimate mortician. Now in terms I, of iconic managers in WWE, I believe I remember hearing about that. I could be, I think I remember hearing that somewhere in some type of video or whatnot. WWE, the late great Paul Bearer is up there with the very best. Bearer joining forces with The Undertaker was an ingenious pairing, and it's hard to imagine the dead man's career being the same if he didn't have Bearer by his side during mm -hmm. his early days. A truly crazy fact about Bearer is that when he was selected to be the dead man's manager, he was already a licensed mortician. Wow. Bearer legitimately had a degree in mortuary science from San Antonio College, wow. which was an unbelievable coincidence, but it was a sign that Bearer was a perfect man for the pivotal role. Number Facts. six, WrestleMania <laughs> 1 took place in the afternoon. WrestleMania 1 was arguably the most important event in WWE history, and whilst the event took place in Madison Square Garden, WWE simply wasn't the priority for the Garden during the day of the inaugural WrestleMania. WrestleMania 1 took place in the afternoon, and the main reason for this was because there was a special basketball event set to take place in the evening. Oh, the wow. MSG had to clean up the arena, ready for the next show. Damn. This would be a stark contrast to what WrestleMania would become for venues and cities. Whilst the first Imagine Russell having a WrestleMania in the early afternoon so they can hurry up and get the hell up out of there for another sporting event. Can't even imagine it now. Now it's two nights, so they have to have the stadium for two nights Mania or wherever they're like at. An inconvenience for MSG. Fast forward to almost four decades later, and WrestleMania is one of the most profitable and successful events in the world. Facts. Number five, Vladimir Kozlov pinned The Undertaker clean. I think I remember 2008 this. 2008 to 2009, WWE seemed insistent on making Vladimir Kozlov a top heel in the company. Mm -hmm. In a daring attempt to achieve this, they did the unthinkable and yep. had Kozlov pin the dead man clean as a whistle on SmackDown. This was an outcome that nobody saw coming, and the finish left fans completely bewildered. Yeah. The finish saw the dead man attempt old school only for Kozlov to counter it into a basic power slam. Yeah. It's insane to think that this move once pinned the most iconic figures in WWE Damn, history. Power slam took Number the Undertaker four, out. Batista is older than Triple H. When Evolution formed, it was portrayed that Randy Orton and Batista were the young stars of the faction. Uh -huh. I didn't even know that. With Orton, but Batista was shockingly older than Triple H by a few months. 
when the oh, two feuded okay. in 2005, the feud was presented as an old school versus new school yeah, rivalry, yeah, yeah. and Batista seemed to be considerably younger than the game, but that simply wasn't the case. Number three, Goldberg won the world title. Yeah, they made it seem as if he was much younger, but hey, kudos to Batista being in peak shape where he looked like he was much younger than Triple H. <laughs> in four different decades, He didn't have all the facial hair. Although Goldberg hasn't been a full-time talent for most of his career, the WWE Hall of Famer has achieved a noteworthy accomplishment. Goldberg has amazingly won a world title in four separate decades. That's Goldberg wild. won the WCW title in the 90s. In the 2000s, he won the WWE yeah. world title. In the 2010s, Goldberg won the Universal title. Yeah. And finally, in the 2020s, Goldberg once again captured the Universal title. This yeah. is truly a crazy statistic and sounds completely fabricated, but it's 100% That's true. That's crazy Number two, to think about. Michael Cole has a higher win percentage at WrestleMania than The Undertaker. The Undertaker's oh, WrestleMania on, win streak is one of the most notable on, and well-known do streaks in Who wrestling. Who came up with this Even stat? Dead Man's win streak is going to be celebrated forever. One individual has a better win percentage than the Dead Man at WrestleMania, and that's Michael Cole. Cole has competed in one WrestleMania event that came in 2011 when he wrestled Jerry the King Lawler in an atrocious match at WrestleMania 27. Atrocious is not the Cole word. won this match via DQ, meaning he has a 100% record at WrestleMania. Since Cole has seemingly hung up his boots indefinitely, it seems like this statistic will remain factually correct forever. And number one, Mick Foley, Man of the Year. The Ash That's era was arguably pointless. the WWE's <laughs> most popular time. The product was absolutely everywhere and it truly became a fundamental part of the late 90s pop culture. One of the most popular stars in the beloved era was Mick Foley, aka Mankind, and Foley's popularity was on full display during 1998. In that year, Time Magazine ran a poll to determine the man of the year, and Attitude Era fans decided to flock to the site and vote wow. for Foley, which gave him an astronomical lead. Time Magazine officials would later disqualify Foley from voting, stating that he hadn't done anything worthy to warrant being awarded with the prestigious wow. title. Wow. Yeah, folks, 15 w That's crazy. Nah, screw that, man. He definitely should have been man of the year. The dude was putting his body on the line for our entertainment. Shout out to... The wrestling fans back there voting for him to be number one. And he basically wanted, but they had to disqualify him because of semantics. Nah, Foley definitely deserved to be man of the year at that time. <laughs> Dude is certified GOAT. He was making a name for himself by damn near killing himself for our entertainment, man. But comment down below. Let me know which some of these facts you did not know. The Michael Cole one. That's just someone who's bored making up fucking statistics. What the hell? Of course he's going to have a 100% win ratio. He only had one match and he won by disqualification. Of course his percentage is better than The Undertaker. Who came up with that? Why? No one needed... No, no one cared. <laughs> but I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K and I'm still here on Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.